gonna we're gonna do a you know we're gonna piggyback off of let me get this thing because I just started the recording session on Zoom. Everybody doing the open. Um, Craig Styles is gonna be with me. My second my second guest since the demise of my dad, and it's gonna be a, a topic that we're gonna cover today on the show, everybody. So bear with me because you know Jane was here the first last week and then Craig's here this week and Craig and I've already talked about this. And so it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's just these things that we go through. I'm kind of talking to Craig, talking to the camera, talking to myself. It's like, <laughs> you know what guys, <laughs> when you go through this stuff with your parents, it, there, there ain't no, there ain't no freaking easy way. No, nope, it, it, it's not. It's it not. Just, it was just one of those where I'm going to get through this. And uh, because of the resiliency that we have developed over time, that makes a massive, massive difference. And so, hey, Craig, how are you? <laughs> doing well, Tom, how are let's, you doing? Let's bring it down. <laughs> let's, let's yep. about, you know, but hey, you know, it's all good, man. So uh, it is, it is. Having, having gone through it with my own dad just a couple of years ago, I haven't gone through it with my father-in-law a little north of, gosh, it's going on 13, 14 years now. Yeah. Martin, and both. Yeah, then David DeMarco's family as well. Yeah, going but through I, the whole. I mean, the whole, um, when you and Dave got tight after the demise of your father-in-law. Father-in-law, yep. Yep, yep. Dave's told that story before. And, and yep. Uh, yep. It's just, the, it's the craziest stuff. And so that's life, man. Life is crazy. Well, I, <laughs> not to, not to play pun on, but none of us have got out of here alive. <laughs> well, and, and, and just, is, this is why you got to have your you got to have everything lined up. You got to have yep. your values lined up. You got to have your faith in yourself and whatever, whatever you want to believe in. You know, we don't do the religious thing on this yep. show, but to be perfectly honest, Craig is a very religious person. And I respect that totally. I mean, I love yep. the guy because of that. And um, my dad was a very, very, very spiritual person. So hey, you know to each his own, have your own balance and uh, yep. hopefully again, resiliency. But Craig, what I did was um, I, I put down a t- kind of a temporary title here, parents and mm-hmm. their de- process, process prep. I might call yep. it process prep parents and their demise, but I have three bullets to myself, long or short, medium, long-term, all these goals that go into this process. And I figured, well, this is going to be, you know, for our 23rd visit with you, it's like, okay, let's, we're going to go real life today and let's, right. let's just roll and just see where it goes and have some fun. And <laughs> you and I make the best out of it. Right. Cause the right. only, the only way, the only way you can enjoy life is by actually enjoying life. It's, right? it's, you know, the joy so far that was completely out of, out of nowhere, everybody was meeting my dad's neighbors and because he was such a pillar in the neighborhood Mm -hmm. that was just so unbelievable and plus then they turned me on to all of the connections Mm -hmm. because for all the viewers out there that are watching this intro video um my dad was the only he was the the older grandfather white guy what it was in an arab neighborhood on the on the edge on the very borderline of Detroit, Dearborn, Dearborn, Detroit, and mm-hmm. you know, Dearborn, Michigan, you know that Dearborn, Michigan, is very very nice and it's very very Arab and it's like and it's totally cool and the people are just amazing, um so they have been so helpful and I just appreciate them all very much so yep and actually we're going down to dinner on Saturday night we're driving to Detroit or Dearborn actually to have dinner with a family that helped my dad a lot just to continue the the healing process and continue his legacy because I'm going to help some of the daughters that are trying to figure out how to get college figured out and all that good stuff and so you know just we parlay I told this woman Craig because they love my dad so much and they said God you're just like your dad you're just like your dad I said listen I said to Francis, the Francis, I always called him the Francis. I said, the Francis gave me my foundation, but I am the Francis on steroids. So, <laughs> he gave me the foundation to just yep. build, build off of all, all of this stuff. So, yep. To build about off him. of. Absolutely. About him. Yep. That's, that's why I did that video saying, thanks dad, you know, for my life, you know, so yep. that's uh, 
That's all good. So let's get rolling here. And uh, how's that sound to you, Craig, for the... Uh, Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. You're so good at this stuff. We'll talk out, We'll talk off air. Um, yeah. Off, off everything about other things, too. So yep. um, let's get it, bad boy. <laughs> and everybody, welcome to the Top Bad Show. Here we go with Craig Styles and his 23rd visit. Let's rock it. Wow, 23. Hasn't been that many already. Holy cow. Yeah, man. You, you should have this down. You should be interviewing me. <laughs> so what's my dad talk videos, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll talk to you about that off air. <laughs> They're getting popular. Here we go. There you go. Last week, Alyssa was back. Alyssa Guadani, and I love that girl so much. You know, Sandy and I are just, we just adore. Mm -hmm. her. She was... Hold on, hold on. Let me let me recap it. Hold on, I got to restart this thing here. Dang it, I read it wrong. <laughs> Stop. Fucked up. God dang it. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. My fault. Remember, I'm laughing with you, not at you. I know. I know. Okay, maybe I am laughing at you, but that's a, that's another point. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll restart this session. What I've done before. I'll exit out of here. Um, shoot. Quit. And I'll start it again. <laughs> uh, hang on one second. <laughs> Technology with Tom Matt. Reboot. Yeah, I'm just going to restart the session. Get it right the first time. Don't, don't, don't screw up. That's a, That's my tip for, as we're still recording the Zoom thing, you guys. And this has happened occasionally where I Tom goofs up. Um, just when you're, if you're doing a, if you're doing a show, podcast, whatever, expect the unexpected. TMS and have your files. Wow. Wait a minute. Expect the unexpected. Is that, I think, is that heard, I, think I, I think I've heard that before. That, that Let me think right. about that for a minute. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. Probably where I stole it from. <laughs> well, we always have, we always have to be prepared for the unexpected in some form or another. Absolutely. Trying to, right? All right. So let me click here. Make that bigger. Let me do this. It's all good. I, I don't let and I'm talking to the to the viewers now, Craig. Um, mm -hmm. Because I you know this can't let this kind of stuff get under your skin. I mean, it's just just got to roll with it, man. Again, resiliency. We're gonna talk a lot about resiliency. I'm writing that down. Okay, here we <laughs> here we go again. Here we go again. Longest opening video segment yet in history. Let's go for the Guinness Book of World Records. We can do this crossing bridges here here we go everybody thank you for tuning in and away we go this is a professional <laughs> you're gonna get well, me probably getting going on the giggles or something yeah, quickly you know, see how my guest does this, everybody when we start this radio program mitch will probably cut all this out. that's fine welcome to tom edge this week's episode with craig styles last week jane kurth was here and uh she helped me get through that um she was the first show since the demise of my dad and um, yeah. it's really challenging. And now Craig is here to help me again. And we're going to talk about some of the, some of the things that occurred with, uh, with my pops and um, how it can help you through our stories, because that's what we do here. You know, we just share all of our intimate stories because it's like, we're all family. That's, that's mm -hmm. the way. So Craig Stiles, you know, he's been here. This is his 23rd visit, received his Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering from Arizona State University. Probably don't need to do all this bio stuff with this guy. Just, just know Desideri, listen to this program, go to our website, TomMatShow.com, go to Financial Fitness, and that's where you'll find Craig, 22 shows of Craig. And anything you want to know about financial stuff, like today's episode is going to be different, but he's got his MBA. Concentration in finance, goodness, because he's our finance guy, from Western Michigan University. And again, full disclosure, as I, I will say in our segment two read, 
is Craig is our guy. He handles all of our re refirement zone savings. Thank goodness. Seems like it's doing pretty well too. Imagine that, you know, we got it with the guy <laughs> and it's like, Hey, you know, I'll tell you a funny story here later after we get through this little quick, this quick bio help. Craig um, applied his analytical skills to address and resolve financial issues. He created Desideri Analytics. It's a, it, it's a phenomenal tool to help navigate this complicated world that we live in. He makes financial decisions based on these principles, discipline, trust, trust, discipline. He is the man, and he is also a servant leader. So resides in Williamson with his wife, Steph, and who knows how many kids. I mean, let Craig take it from there because he knows the, he knows the drill here with this radio program. Craig Style, <laughs> how many children reside in that giant house of yours out there in Williamson? Uh, well, does that include or exclude friends? <laughs> no, that's what I mean. That's exactly – you knew where I was going with this because it's yeah. like – Okay, so when you have your open houses, like you just had, um, was it yeah. Miriam's open house? Miriam's open house, yep. And, and so, so how many people came to that? Because we were out of, we were oh, out of. Oh gosh, time. yeah, we had, uh, we had it, we had it scheduled from four to seven in the afternoon, like most people will have, and uh, basically we had probably about four hundred to five hundred people come through, and a lot of it is just some of the homeschooling communities. But what was beautiful about the event, more specifically was it was done in conjunction with one of my daughter's close friends. And so we have a lot of mixture of friends amongst the, the two, uh, two kids. And as the night was going on, gosh, families with young kids were still there at 9, 9.30 in the evening. And so the aspect of the welcoming of all the families together, having a good time. I mean, it was a beautiful day weather-wise. And then uh, basically as, as, as the families were leaving, if you will, later, a little bit later on the evening, the younger kids, or they should say the teenagers are staying on. We have a, a sport court off the north side of our house. So you had, you know, 20 kids, 30 kids, 40 kids playing volleyball and swapping out teams and uh, figuring out new games to play. And it was of all ages. So you'd have, you know, uh, kids in their early twenties who have known kids who are in their mid to late teens. And then you'd have them, including younger kids that are 10, 11, 12 years old and building the teams out. It was just a fun dynamic to watch all the kids kind of get together and play. And then the parents kind of observe and just have an enjoyment watching kids interact and be together. So yeah, uh, the, you know, with, with all of my kids being home uh, this summer, um, you know, we have our 11 kids were there. And then we have uh, a couple of other kids who are staying with us. One of uh, is from out of Kansas, a friend of my son, Charlie's, uh, moved to, to Michigan for the summer and was able to get a job because the, the income was here's a little more. And then we have another family friend, their daughter is staying with us, um, working on a, a local farm uh, to, in order for her to, to gain experience working with horses. So, um, so yeah, I guess we have 15, 16 people staying with us over the summer. So yeah. And then you sit there and think about having evening dinners. Okay, we'll have like 20, <laughs> 20 people or whatever it might be. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it's definitely um, energetic. There's a lot of energy in our home, a lot of energy. Okay, I want to add two things here. First off, the sports court, Craig Stiles, our guest today, everybody resetting this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call this process prep, parents and her demise, talking about my dad's demise, Francis who uh, was a couple of weeks ago. And by the time this show airs, it'll be about six weeks. But uh, what I got to make, I got to mention two things that Craig just, I, I'm just going to comment on his sports court that he's talking about everybody. It, it's a little more than a sports court. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like something you see at an NBA um, millionaire's home. It's uh. that it's, 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 and I'm giving you a huge compliment here, Craig, you know that, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a beautiful setup. And, um, how much is your food bill? Oh gosh, well it, it all depends. We we've transitioned and changed quite a bit, right? Because we, as you know, we have our we have our own chickens. We raise chickens. My wife just dropped off this ah. morning. Ted, uh, we dropped off ten meat chickens um, to be processed. So we have probably another forty to fifty meat chickens to be processed yet a little bit later on. 
Um, and then we have uh, probably seven or eight cows right now out in the back that will be processing. We have two that are probably going in uh, this fall. We have two that went in earlier in the spring. Um, so yeah, the, the aspect of how we go about um, getting our own food right now is I mean, one, it's a couple of different dynamics. It's, it's a great experience for the kids, uh, for them to be able to raise the, the animals. Uh, my wife loves the aspect of having a garden that we have. Uh, she works diligently on gets the kids more involved in it. Um, and then the aspect of them going out and just picking off of, of fresh fruits and vegetables, if you will. And so in eating it, it's a wonderful thing. Kids know where their, their meat's coming from. They know where their vegetables are coming from. It's just a positive experience all the way around. And then the cost of being able to, to maintain them, where you got to get your food. Um, yeah, honey, gosh, we've got uh, three or four different hives right now. I think five hives that my daughter Miriam is processing as well as she's doing it for a couple of others. Does Miriam so, run that, that aspect of the farm as well? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much at the, at the present time. We'll, we'll see what's uh, going to be transpiring, but she's taken a, a summer off. Um, she has ex been accepted to two different colleges, uh, Benedictine College and Oklahoma State. And uh, Benedictine's offered her a scholarship. We'll see if Oklahoma State has some funds to help or uh, that they might be able to offer as well. We'll see. But right now she's taking a year off, taking some classes at the local community college and uh, in business. And um, she has a strong connection within the horse community with a lot of the uh, ranchers and, and whatnot locally. So um, we'll see where, where she wants to get into animal husbandry. We'll see where that goes. And, um, my other kids, you know, Charlie, my, he's rising junior and, in mechanical engineering at Benedictine college. My son, Christian just graduated from college, um, just this last spring. So he's been working all summer in, in uh, uh, landscape and construction there. So he's putting some applications out there for some work. We'll see where that leads them. And Michaela is studying opera down at Florida State University. So she's graduated from Hillsdale with a degree in economics, but her passions in music. We'll see where that goes. Um, so she's had some gigs, if you will, that she sang at um, earlier this year. And uh, so, yeah, our, 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 we have definitely a pretty busy household. The last, this is fair week. So Michaela or Miriam got to show her cow. Um, so she did that. It was the first time she did that. She did pretty well. It was kind of exciting for her to be out there with her cow and, and get some support from the family. Cause all of us were there to support her. Um, and then we had some nice time just staying at the fair, watching the kids ride around. And it's, it's fun again to watch the older kids embrace and take the younger kids and go and do things with them. And, um, to see that you can really tell when you're watching other siblings or even other families that you see out there where they kind of aggregate together and where you see older siblings taking care of younger siblings and it's it's a beautiful thing to see especially when you're in a, like a fair environment all right we're so. gonna take a pause here that was a great jumping off spot and a nice story catching up this is this is craig's life with the fam and if you just just think of raising kids is is challenging but it's also so rewarding when things line up mm -hmm. hope that we can help you line things up craig's here Parents and their demise, process prep, talking about my dad, talking about resiliency, financial fitness with my pal, my bro, mm -hmm. Greg Styles. I'm Tom Matt. All right, cool. <laughs> hey man, enjoy the enjoy your company and enjoy you as my friend. And so it's like, and then. To top it off, everybody, in between segments, guess what? This <laughs> segment's going to be sponsored by Craig Styles. Hey, <laughs> I love it. So great. Yeah, as you can see, I still got my band on for the county fair. I haven't got permission from my wife to take it off yet because we're going to a concert Friday night and what today's Wednesday. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I've had this on since Monday. <laughs> so uh -huh. I'm like, can I take it off yet, honey, or not? I don't know. Look like you escaped from the hospital. Here we go. Yeah, I know. I may, I may have, but don't tell everybody. I won't. <laughs> Not for my physical ailments. It might be more mental. Who knows? Okay, here we go. Here we go. This segment sponsored by Ameriprise Financial and Craig Styles. Your Ameriprise Financial Advisor. Our Ameriprise Financial Advisor, as I said earlier, Craig Styles can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future. I got this card here in front of me, everybody, just to remind me of all the like the phone numbers and stuff. 
but Craig's been with us for so long and supported us for so long. And it's just been awesome. Here's some numbers. All right. We're going to talk to Craig about all kinds of good things. I want you to reach out to Craig because again, full disclosure, as I said earlier, if you just joined the show, all of our refinement zone savings, which seem to be doing pretty well, actually, I kind of like that, you know, it's sort of <laughs> like, Hey, cool, man. And which quick story told Craig the other day when we were setting up this interview, Craig, don't be mad at me, but I just now uh, it's been almost a year now. And I just now opened the first email on, you know, how we're doing and portfolio portfolio looks pretty good. So he, he was pretty happy with that with the right finance. <laughs> With the right financial advisor, life can be brilliant. And I can absolutely tell you, guarantee you that, everybody. Life <laughs> is brilliant when you got a guy like Craig watching your stuff. 1 800 528 1355, 517 483 4853. Craig.styles at ampf.com. Offices are located at 2400 Lake Lansing Road. Sweet B is in brilliant or B is in Lansing, Michigan. 48912. Craig is the uh, creator of Desideri Analytics, where we are making light of weighted decisions, and that's his proprietary algorithm. And I like to say, Craig came up with an algorithm before the term algorithm became kind of trendy, and now it's like overplayed, and they probably want to exit it out of the out of the dictionary. But he was in it way, 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 way. He he saw all this stuff coming, and that's why we're so happy and proud to be with Craig. And just just let him do the do his thing, man. So you can go do your thing. All right. Here are some of the stations in and out of the network. 92.1 FM, Grand Haven, WGHN, first, first to ever carry us on broadcast radio years and years ago. The flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, which we are a part of, WJM 1240 AM in Lansing, WJRW 1340 in Grand Rapids, WKLQ 1490 Muskegon Whitehall, WIPB FM 94.5 Mackinac City, and of course, our PBS affiliate at Michigan State University, WKAR 102.3 FM and AM 870 News Talk in East Lansing. want to say thank you to Steve and Ivy Gruber for having the faith in us to put us on the Mich Michigan Talk Network. And remember that we have four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon, Generation Us being the latest and greatest. So back to our, excuse me, our second second segment sponsor is our guest today. Another financial fitness episode. I love doing these, especially setting this up, everybody. Well, upon my dad's demise recently, um, it's been a tough time. It's been it's been rough, and it's like you know having Jane on the first show recording post my dad's death, and now Craig. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Um, it's part of the deal. And so that's why I called this one parents and their demise process prep. Craig, you know, and I appreciated that phone call we had, you know, that long yep. phone call. So you deal with this. You see this stuff. Okay. Yeah. I'm on that side of the table, right? Yeah, From the aspect of like a shared and kind of even a little bit earlier on having my dad pass away in 2019 and uh, my mom passing away back when I was young. So my father-in-law passing away um, back in 2009, and each situation was a little bit different, you know, from, uh, from when my mom passed, too young to really understand and know what's going on, and then to my father passing and having Alzheimer's for several years and that kind of progressing, uh, making sure things are already prepped and prepared, to my father-in-law passing suddenly in a, in, a, in a boating accident. So from, from those dynamics, making sure you're prepared for the unexpected, and making sure things are in order. Um, each one of those situations, at least the latter two with my own family, understanding the, the, the change in dynamics, the impact that it has on family members, where your family is. Um, how do you go about managing that whole process? How people respond to the passing of a loved one um, and being able to deal with it and having the patience to work with them through financial matters because each financial institution may handle the distribution of assets a little bit differently, requiring copies of a death certificate where others require the actual death certificate and, and work with the funeral home and making sure all the arrangements are, are made accordingly to how your, your parents' wishes wanted to be taken care of. And of course, uh, when my father passed away, that was in December of 2019. And so, of course, that was the beginning of the whole COVID dynamic and situation. And so there was a lull where we didn't have a funeral right away, but then we had a, a memorial um, in his in his uh, in his status, if you will. And that was only of uh, family members and close friends. 
So it wasn't anything that was really major along those lines. Um, so dealing with each one of those situations, making sure that the items were in order to have as minimal impact for the surviving spouse, for the surviving members of the family, that becomes more aware when it actually is being implemented versus that of when people are talking, well, what do I need to do that for? Why do I need to have the trust? Well, don't I already have a power of attorney with you? And why do I need to sign these documents here to have just your power of attorney for your financial documents? This is, there's each situation is going to be a little, a little bit different and making sure that execution and the least amount of interruption occurs. I mean, even with my own, my own mother-in-law, little things to, to understand. So we, had a trust. My father-in-law had a trust in place. Um, but our attorney, uh, working with our attorney, uh, suggested that we still open up probate. And so one of the reasons for opening up probate, even though everything was transitioning, was if there's ever a dispute against a, an estate, if you don't open up probate, a person can come back and, and an attorney would have to validate the time period. But roughly about three or four years, they could always come back to an estate uh, to to have a, a settlement or anything take place. But if you open up probate, once it gets put out there and it's made public, then it's like 30 days or 60 days or something along those lines. And then nobody can come back after the estate after that time period. So trying to explain that to my mother-in-law in, in some areas, she's like, well, I thought Bob just wanted to completely avoid probate, wanted to completely avoid it. says, well, we are. There's only one item that's going through probate and that's the automobile because you can't really put something like that in it and it doesn't make much sense to it. And so it's just the value of the automobile. And so it's just the aspect of having that opened up. Um, and that would be one where you, you have an estate planning kind of attorney kind of sit down and talk about that process a little more. But being able to explain it to my mother-in-law, being able to explain it to the rest of the family. And then once everything is done and settled, it's, it's taken care of. Um, being able to take care of bills right away. You know, if you have a, a loved one who's passed away and taxes are need to be paid, um, utility bills, yeah, utility bills, right, need to be taken care of. Yep, all of that stuff. All of it's happening. Craig, we got a minute yep. to go before we break here. Let me reset this thing. What we're talking about today, everybody, with Craig Styles, financial fitness guru, Ameriprise kingpin, and our guy. Uh, parents and their demise process prep and, and my dad's demise, if you're just joining us was recently and i am executor luckily we do have a very simple will but it's still it's not everything and right talk more about this the just short medium and long craig just gave you a little snapshot of what he's gone through every situation everybody is different every situation is different so having everything lined up is helpful but it's still going to be a process and as craig said and we'll go to break on this topic right here, managing the process. Craig Styles, financial fitness, parents and their demise, process prep. I'm Tom Mack. Mm. Good. Great. Good story. Mm. Thank you, Craig, for sharing that yep. story. My pleasure. My pleasure. I mean, that's, I mean, it's truly indifferent. I mean, from that and even my, my dad's own past, my dad's estate was a lot more simple. And well, so... Okay, so where do you want to, what's the most logical way to take this? You want to continue with that or we want to leave that now and go into short, medium, long-term planning or stories or wh where would you. From, from that, we can, we can touch base on how that was like on my, my mother-in-law situation was different because she had trust and everything kind of established. And then okay. uh, for my father-in-law going forward or my, my actual father, the aspect of what happened and what was expected from, from that situation. Right. Continue so. this story. So that's cool. That's cool. Right. Also. Yep. Uh, fifth segment, we're going to do messages again, messages to my younger self. So if okay. you got or messages to the young people, what's the yep. next thing? This might be the message. <laughs> the message it might be. be. You know? Well, I have, I can, I can probably do the influence, being an influencer, being uh, versus that of one who's easily influenced. So that's great. Perfect. There we go. Okay, here we go. The simplest way to connect with us, everybody, is via our website, TomMattShow.com, which has been evolving. It's been evolving. It continues to evolve. If you have a website and it doesn't evolve, then something's wrong because 
you could everything's changing tech technology digital technology is always constantly upgrading and we are now firmly entrenched with youtube we're on tiktok there that's all there i never i never say that but you know what mm-hmm. i found it found it to be pretty useful tool i mean it's actually there's a lot of people that may be uh slightly growing older hey that's totally cool i mean it's 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 very the young people at michigan state university i give them a lot of credit for helping me kind of navigate and what the do's and don'ts and so check them out please do whatever flavor of social media is yours use it we communicate across many platforms i try to get every you know when i get messages in like um facebook messaging and instagram and all these things sometimes i kind of lose lose them a little bit so bear with me but the the best thing to do is just go to the contact box on the website because that mm-hmm. goes directly to sandy guys so please go there if you would like if you got a specific topic or comments or whatever because this show is all about helping all of you and us believe me believe me and when i do my daily affirmational videos which i do those now every day put them up on tiktok and on facebook and instagram about 50% of that is intrinsically to help my heart heal. And the other 50% is information for you to do with it, however you want to do with it. So our mission is to build an engaged society and team. That's what we do here through this three C's of community collaboration and cooperation, sharing stories, just like we're doing with Craig, 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 Craig Styles is with us. Parents and their demise process prep talking about my dad, Francis, Matt, if you don't know, if you were listening to the show and you didn't know my dad passed, he did on July 17th and it was very sudden. And, uh, but he was, uh, you know, 85 plus and he lived a great life. And so it happens. And so Craig, mm-hmm. we're going back to the stories now because you've had several experiences with this. And this is a whole thing about getting people kind of to think about because people right. don't want, I went to my dad to talk to him, which I so many to my sister did the same thing karen did the same thing she's great he never wanted to discuss this whole this whole right. thing it was hit right. it was a really generational thing craig uh, i don't know how your experience was with that let's continue the story because you have a depth of knowledge on this thank goodness that you're our guy and you can help us navigate this thing and just, just keep our heads from like there's just so many things going on right now please right. go ahead Story. Well, it. just just from the dynamic of my my mother-in-law and and my father-in-law situation, oh, you know, the formation of trust upon his passing, an irrevocable trust. You had a a revocable trust. One trust was designed to care for my mother-in-law. The other one was to be used to pass on to the next generation, but could still be um, used for her care if needed be. You know, from a long-term care facility for medical purposes, whatever it might be, so it doesn't completely. Um, deplete her her living trust for her everyday living expenses. Well, my when my father in law passed away a couple of years ago, the situation was different. His his life was a little less complicated, for lack of a better term, and everything that he had in order, making sure accounts were <laughs> excuse me uh, jointly owned with my my stepmom, and making sure that powers of attorneys and everything like that were in place for his medical power of attorney. All of those dynamics we had talked about early early on when I was. Uh, getting into the finance industry, my dad had a significant amount of debt as he was reaching into retirement, received an inheritance from his dad, and we ended up, all right, what do we need to do? Because he's never been involved investing investing before. He had a, a pension from the Michigan State Police and uh, Social Security and whatnot. So he was, he was comfortable uh, in establishing his income, but his income wasn't enough to pay off or end or pay down debt. So managing investments, with his debt and utilizing the investments to make the payments on his debt, as opposed to just chunking it down right away, he was actually able to utilize the investments to literally pay off his debt before he had passed and uh, from the income over years. Uh, that was able to pay that off uh, eventually, yet then still allow him to have some money left over later on down the line. So that way, when those accounts were used for their specific purpose, and when my mother, uh, my stepmom ended up uh, kind of inheriting everything from my dad, she was pretty well positioned for her next chapter in life. And so being there for her, being there for even my siblings going through the whole transition in that process, you know, it, it's a different transition. It's a different change. So it was, it was kind of a, um, it was, it was 
every situation, like we talked about before, every situation is going to be a little bit different until you have that conversation with someone who knows and can give you some guidance as to well, what to think about and what not to worry about. Um, I encourage people to understand, at least attempt to understand how best to try to simplify your financial life going forward, because sometimes people make things more complicated than they need to be. And that I think becomes um, uh, an important conversation to have. Like what happens if you're joint or you have three joints, I've got two kids joint to my account with me. Well, what happens? Well, if one of the kids gets in a car accident and, and then it comes out that it was their fault, well then that one child's with one third of those assets can be brought in on a lawsuit. Maybe it's best to have those children powers of attorney, but only you own the account, right? Um, or have its thing structured as a trust. What do you put into the trust? What do you not put into the trust? Um, all of those dynamics of understanding what assets have been accumulated over time, how to generate income from the portfolio outside of pensions, outside of social security, um, all of that. So the, the dynamics of the different situations and where we find ourselves, um, I try to bring some comfort to clients when we're sitting there evaluating their current situations, not just looking at their financial structure and how that is done, but also looking at um, the physical structure of the accounts and how it's all tied together and making sure they're all matching up as best we can. All of this so. is so vitally important, everybody. And you're listening to Craig. Craig Stiles is with us today. 23rd visit parents and their demise process prep is what I'm calling this one because we're basing this around a, a very, it's, it's a hard topic. And then believe me, having this conversation and it's so fresh to me still, my dad's only been gone for two weeks is still um, it's good to talk about, but it's also uh, it's gut check time. And yep. Craig is spot on with all of this. Craig, the thing that I uh, that Sandy and I realized was somebody was going to have to um, be the point. I am the executor, so we, uh, uh, then I became point. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness we had enough liquid savings to write checks because yep. now until we get all of these other loose ends taken care of, it's not like he had a, a lot of my dad did not have a lot of assets, but he's got right. some. It's just a matter of filtering through all this. And you've got to go through these processes, everybody. So that's why you got to have these conversations, these crucial conversations, as they called it at Michigan State University when I was out there. Mm -hmm. These crucial conversations you have with your parents and and your children, because they need to know too, right? Craig, I mean, how yep. often does that happen? We got two minutes to go before we go to break here, just give you a heads up, but how often does it happen where a client like me or Sandy, Sandy and I, um, bring their children in with them? Does that happen at all? Or would you suggest that that happen? Or how does that work? Um, I would say at this point in time, roughly about 40 to 50% of my clients who I speak with regularly have a uh, have their kids engaged. You know, it's at our encouragement in regards to it. most of our, like typically their, their oldest child or one that they find most financially savvy will be the power of attorney on their account. So we'll, we'll have communication with them. Um, and so that I would say is that's nice to have earlier rather than later to where if you have, uh, like, for example, if we have a, are establishing a power of attorney on, an, on a client's account, and if they push that off and then they ended up start having some early stages of Alzheimer's as an example, then that becomes an issue because if a person starts having these phases and the cognitive ability for them to be able to sign a legal document diminishes. So that becomes more difficult because you have to have documents like that need to be notarized and you need to be in a proper state of mind that you're granting certain powers to, to your child. Um, and then we always have to watch for abuse that may, may take place. So there's things that we have to advisors uh, watch out for as well. I'm going to circle back to that here. We're going to go to break here, everybody. Craig Stiles is with us. Parents and the demise process prep is what I'm calling this. Um, and talk about some elder, I hate to say elder this, abuse. Yeah. Elder abuse. We're going to talk about it because, and then we're going to talk about some attorneys that we know together jointly. Craig Stiles is here. Financial fitness. It's a good one. It's always a good mm -hmm. one. Got it. You, the, the world is too complicated to leave these loose ends, everybody. So please stick around and we'll bring you some more good info. Craig. Craig, 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 Tom, Tom, Tom. Mm -hmm. It's just like mm. to say back, but you know what? Hey. <laughs> Have it, brother. Amen. 
called me today. Actually, I've, I've been getting phone calls. I, I told you that I kind of avoided a bunch of phone calls. I just wasn't, I wasn't mentally ready yet because I've just right. got so many things going on. And so I've been very, very careful about who I'm talking to because I know it's going to be a roller coaster. Like, oh, I'll get out. And uh, so, you know, that, yep. that tip for you guys that are watching this video is, um, especially if you're an executor like I am and you got so many plates spinning out of, out of nowhere. So sort of keep yourself reined in because the emotions, they come and go and you never know when. Mm -hmm. Take my yep. word for it. All right, here we go. Yep. I will get through this episode. I will get through this episode. <laughs> Brock Fletcher, yes, you will. James Realty, another guy that we trust so much because he helped us with Big House Holt, Little House Lansing. I mean, without these two sponsors, with the Craig and with Brock, people that we really, really love and depend on, life is not only not brilliant, it's painful. And so you got to have these people in your life. And so the real estate side of things, one person I called was Brock because I didn't know what the hell to start doing with my dad's house. Right. You know, I made the call to him and he gave me some advice on the phone. That's why you need to get his number down. 517-853-6408. Put this one in your speed dial though. 517-303-3262 is his cell phone. Text him. Tell him you heard it from Tommy. He'll know it's radio. He, he'll get back to you right away. Anyway, this guy's the best guy checking his voicemail and changes his voicemail daily. You'll know when he's calling back because he'll say right in his voicemail greeting. So call that 303-3262 number, or you can go online to kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com. All of our friends and sponsors, especially two, our two sponsors, you can find their links on the bottom of our homepage, tommatshow.com. At the bottom there, there's the banners for the guys. Click on those. Away you go. Go on the subjects of and the topics of our radio program slash podcast, and you'll see reality real estate. You'll see financial fitness and go there. It doesn't cost you a dime. Just do your own due diligence with this stuff, everybody, because if you don't, things are going to come up and then it's going to knock you sideways. And then you're going to say, gosh, I wish I would have listened to Tom on that radio show because he's sharing <laughs> stuff is happening to us as we speak. We're going through this right now. That's why we need Craig. That's why we need Brock. And that's why it's so important to have the people that you trust. And I just, I just, again, Brock Fletcher, 517-853-6408-303-3262. That's 517. That's his cell phone. KWSellingTeam.com. And I would be remiss if I didn't say, what up, Mike Deadman? Mikey, how are you? He was our, uh, he was our buyer's agent for Little House Lansing. It's all good. Back to the show, parents and their demise process prep based around my dad's recent, uh, my dad's recent death. And uh, yes, it's been tough and yes, it's, it's continuing. It's getting better. Every day is a little bit better, but we got to talk about these things. And so Craig, we were, you know, we're finishing up topics here. And then the last segment there at the very end of the segment, you brought up a little bit of, uh, of something that we talked about on the show before with elder abuse. Yep. Now, on the financial side of things, this, this can be very, very, very relevant. I mean, when we had our conversation last week, the first phone call I had since my dad's death, um, you know, I, I've got people on me at my dad's service about his house. And you yep. said you this kind of stuff where people are, you know, they're, they're not, they're, they're not waiting. That's right. why you got to document it guys, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's like a feeding frenzy and it's like, you know, just money, just go ahead, Craig, please. Sure. Well, two situations, right? Two situations. Like in your situation, you're looking at it, you have, you have people within the neighborhood that recognize one, the value of the property and everything. And they, they want to be able to have a good connection and good relationship with you and the family. And, and of course the dynamics of his neighbors, they respect them. They, they've, you know, had a lot of respect for him in the same, in the same note, they want to say, all right, well, Okay, now what are you going to do with the home, right? What's going to be the next step? And I remember that with my my uh, mother-in-law or my stepmom when she passed, right? She, she has this big house. My dad and her lived in it. It's a house that I grew up in. And so I'm the youngest of four, four kids. And growing up in this house, my stepmom has a, a child from a previous marriage. She wanted to be, move to be a little closer to him. 
what do you do at the home? Who do you sell it to? Do you sell it with family members? Do you sell it to just put it out on the open market? So that dynamic and change, this got to, there's kind of a balancing act that one has to deal with and provide some space for closure. And in most circumstances, like even in my mother-in-law's situation, not to make major decisions for about a year. I know you'll have some psychologists that you probably have talked to um, that have our psychiatrists or, if, or whatever the dynamic might be, counselors that would be, don't make any major financial decisions or make any major transition or changes in your life for roughly about a year. Give it about a year. So this way you can get into the new dynamic and realize what do you need, what do you not need? And our family worked like that with my, my mother-in-law in regards to she just wanted to get rid of a lot of stuff. I want to sell this, I want to get this, I want to get this. I'm like, well, wait a minute. There's reasons why you have these locations. There's reasons why you have this stuff to begin with. And let's think of that to, to how important that is going to be for the family as a whole to carry out a continuous dream. And of course, several years later, I'm so glad I didn't do this. I'm so glad I didn't do that. And we just had to help her make decisions as to, what to get rid of, what not to get rid of, and then what to donate to, what not to donate to, you know, whatever, whatever the structure might be. And that I think has been one of the more telling parts, uh, like one, like what you're highlighting, the, the aspect, money does it make people do funny things from the aspect of non-family members coming in to, to buy a house versus that of family members coming in to buy a house and what that's going to mean, right? So, um, and that, I think the latter is going to be a little more delicate because of a family members coming in, you're like, okay, well, what does that mean? Is that a, a more favor? Maybe I wanted the house, right? Whatever the dynamic may be. And well, if you, you want up that house, you got to, you got to buy me out. So I want this part of the trust. So it becomes a completely different situation, especially if, um, if some of the stuff wasn't determined ahead of time. So fortunately, like amongst my brothers and sisters and, and I, with my father-in-law's passing, we weren't expecting anything. And my mother-in-law really took care of my father when he was, when he was passing. So like, we have no expectations, none whatsoever, and actually supported her through this whole process and continue to support her through it. Um, and so with my mother-in-law's same dynamic, both my wife and her sister are helping to take care of her in a wide variety of ways, uh, making sure that she is and maintains and continues to be involved with our families and our children um, uh, as, as long as she can be. So truly blessed, um, but having all of that dynamic and understanding, and of course, I immediately started thinking about how different families I've worked with have handled things differently, some positive, some not so positive. And I find myself different to where I'm sitting here with the portfolio. I'll grab the portfolio, set it off to the side, and I'll say, okay, there's something else we need to talk about. So let's, let's put it all on the table, get all of our concerns out, because money is not that important. What, is, what was the – when you said not so positive – I'm sorry that I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's just like struck me. You know how I am. I'm just a motor yep. Um just share just a generality with with the listeners because this stuff happens and it's happening to us right now i'm telling you right now there's there's, there's some pretty this is i might write a whole book about this whole thing but well in my in my the similar situations where i'm more involved in you'll have civil um, um sibling rivalries that'll take place upon the passing of either a the first spouse or the second spouse where money starts to get distributed to the to the next generation and some family members will have stronger affinities for some material items where others may not. And others may want to go off and just sell it, get rid of it. And the other's like, no, I want to hold on to it. And so now we have to come up with a situation where one sibling, sibling may not have the funds or resources to buy out the other sibling. How do you resolve those types of situations? So that way I'm like, all right, we need to, we need to deal with your personal relationships first before we start dealing with the monetary issues because if we don't get these personal relationships resolved and have some type of a level of arrangement or agreement distribution of the assets are going to be more difficult going forward and so that dynamic i think is where i talk about some of the negative negative pieces taking place Makes so sense. i mean i don't want to i mean that i could 
you know, there's certain details that I can get into, but it's tough because every, every situation is a little bit different. And I mean, others are more amicable, right? I had a, had a client that property in another state and that family members had stronger affinity to, towards that. And then they had to come up and agree upon what would be the value of that property. Do they, do the, does the estate go and pay for a, um, for a, uh, um, an appraisal for that property? I mean, that would have to be done if we're going to sell and liquidate it, or do you go with the state equalized value of what the property would say there, or you guys just kind of negotiate what you think the value of the price might be. Just work with a local real estate realtor to find out what the sale price might be. Then from that, one person gets the house or whatever the real estate is, and then the other person gets that value in the liquid assets going forward. And then can the person who's receiving the house afford to keep it and maintain it? Okay, let's jump off there. I've got some questions. We're going to reset this thing. Craig Styles is with us. Parents and their demise, process prep, financial fitness. This is very important. This is something that's occurring for Sandy and I and my family right now with my dad. And so we're going through the, the distribution of figuring everything out. Just again, I like what Craig said about taking a year. I, I need to get get his money squared away so that yep. I can. Because if bills start coming in, I need to have funds to pay these bills. I need to yep. make sure you're taken care of. You're listening to the Tom Matt Show. Craig Styles is here. This is really good. We're going to come back. We're going to do messages to our younger self with Craig right after this. <laughs> Blowing through this thing like nothing. <laughs> Sound like hot knife through butter, right? Is that what you're saying? You know, it's just, it's a, it's a, I, I appreciate you. I, you know, it, it, this really does help my healing process. And it's like, and, I, and I'm talking to the camera and I'm talking to Craig too here, everybody, but verbalizing all of this stuff, sharing it, being open with it. Don't internalize. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk to the listener or the viewers. Now don't internalize this stuff. Find your people who are in your bubble who helped make you better as I talk about in my videos and go to them and they will help you. Don't be afraid to go to people and ask for their assistance and just advice and friendship and talking mm -hmm. and you gotta avoid the phone call, avoid the phone call, but eventually you're going to have to make the phone call. And so, all right, here we go. Segment five. You got all your stuff there. Your kind of stuff. And I need, yeah. Doing this radio program has been a blessing of my life. Like you guys just cannot believe it's just brought me close to so many really smart people and these topics we talk about, it's very therapeutic. And um, there's so many people that I have to thank for all of their just helping me learn this business. And Craig Styles is one of them. And Dave DeMarco is the other one. And, you know, Brock and everybody that's been on the show so many times. Unbelievable. We start our 13th season here coming up pretty quickly, October of this year. And wow, it's been 13 crazy. years. Rocking, baby. I mean, we got things happening on social media that's just kind of my, it, it's, we're going to be an overnight success in 14 years. That's it. Okay. <laughs> fine. Great. Cool. If we help you, excellent. How do you, how do people find you, Craig Styles, to connect with you if they miss my, uh, sharing all your good info and if you need me to do all the info i got it right in front of me here because i know all <laughs> the easiest the yeah the easiest the easiest thing to find the easiest way for people to find me on whatever device they have quite frankly is to search my name in ameriprise and whatever search whether it's bing google yahoo duck duck go whichever it is that they wish to utilize if they just search my name craig styles s-t-i-l-e-s and ameriprise they'll come up with my link and then they can reach out through me that way and that way it provides and ask some particular questions or you can input any information in regards to what they want to do and we do have something that we're going to be um, looking into if you will a person will actually have be able to see what my calendar's like. So if there's uh, if there's a time for them and they like to meet with me, there are going to be periods of time in which they could actually uh, log in and schedule a time to meet. 
or schedule a phone call. So that uh, is one option that is going to be made available here shortly as well. But uh, they can call me directly at 517-483-4893, 517-483-4893. So from that perspective, it's going to make it a little easier for them to reach out to me and give me a call. But they can also just email me directly, craig.styles at ampf, that's Adam Michael paulfrank.com. So Craig Styles, C-R-A-I-G dot S-T-I-L-E-S at ampf.com. There you go. AMPF.com, Ameriprise Financial. All right, messages to our younger self. Craig's done this before, so he knows the drill here. <laughs> Fun and people enjoy this thing. And it goes along, kind of parallels with my dad talks that I put out there, um, which get a little bit salty, but you know what? That's on those other social media things. And <laughs> so don't be shocked if you go there and you see Tom going off about something because sometimes you got to get real. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. anyways, Craig. <laughs> message to your younger self in, in, in regards to this topic perhaps where would you like to go with a message to the younger people that you've learned they say hey i could save somebody a lot of freaking uh you know troubles trials and tribulations go right ahead you know you know the drill please well i think uh, i think the biggest thing and i uh, you have to forgive me if i have one of my segments uh, may have been similar to this or not but um understanding that there are truly two types of people in the world. You have those influencers and you have those who are easily influenced. Neither one is right or wrong. Just as an influencer, you have to understand that you're going to influence people to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And as one who is easily influenced, you could be easily influenced to do the right thing or the wrong thing. Now, in each one of those situations, the commonality is understanding and knowing what is right and wrong is what is guiding your conscience to know what is right and what is wrong. And so that for me, faith is what helps to guide me in understanding what the truth is, what is going to guide me in making my decisions, not only for myself, but for my family, as well as for my friends. And understanding how I'm being influenced by the environment that I find myself and having the strength to be able to walk away from that environment makes me a person who at one point was influenced more easily now becomes an influencer because of what I view that may be going against what my values are to strengthen who I am, strengthen who my identity is and makes me the better person that I'm called to do not only for my family, for my kids, but for anyone who I come in contact with each and every day. So understand if you are a person who, uh, who is an influencer or if you're a person who is easily influenced, understand that, but then have a strong foundation knowing what is it that's guiding you to know what is right and what is wrong and stick to that solid foundation. You know, what you're saying is something I learned in my mental health journey. When yep. you know how your mind works, then you can evaluate situations a heck of a lot better because if before I knew how my brain was wired, some of the things, some of the reasons why I thought the way I did, Craig is exactly spot on because I was easily influenced. I wanted to become an influencer. Things would make me a little, you know, kind of crazy and doubting and you wonder, but it's just when you go through therapy, you find your faith, you get with people who care about you and they can kind of peel it back. Mental health is so it's it's awesome i mean it's mm -hmm. just cognitive behavioral therapy everybody just talking to a professional who can take your thoughts and your words and process that and tell you what is happening is so it's 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 so invaluable so and, it, and especially yep. in a situation like we're talking about today with today's topic craig parents and their demise process pro, there is i'm telling you guys my dad was 85 plus years old. He, I, I knew, I knew it, it was eventuality. It was going to come. And I, and, you know, and I kept saying, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You're never ready. And it happens. Right. You're just yep. never ready. Yep. Okay. Great. Carry it for a minute so I can regroup my brain here. <laughs> Cause it's, you know, I've been good through the whole show. And then, you know, <laughs> hey, well, I mean, you, you sit there and think about it. You, you know, your dad was a strong influencer in your life. 
you know, many respects, positive and negative, you know, from that, from that dynamic, my dad was a huge influence in me in my life. And it was kind of funny during my dad's uh, memorial, when we we're sitting down and talking, my, my, uh, wasn't prepared to talk at his, at his, at, uh, at his memorial, if you will. But my oldest sister, Deb comes and sits down and, and, uh, well, basically came up to me and says, Hey, do you want to say a few words at dad's at his funeral? I'm like, uh, sure. So my sister gets up and, and this is, you know, after roughly about 45 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, people consolidating and, or, or talking, uh, aggregate together, if you will, uh, socializing. So my, my sister kind of gets up and gets everybody to sit down and, and she gets up on, she says a few words. So what my sister does, she gets up, she has her note cards. And of course she was valedictorian of her class, you know, star athlete, all this kind of stuff. Just a woman who's very well organized and everything she does. My situation, I kind of get up after she talks and says everything about her dad. I, about her dad, I kind of get up and says, "Well, I think you all know who's the more organized one of the two of us is." <laughs> I says, "So here I am. I have nothing more to share with you other than what comes from my heart." And so, from the dynamic of being able to talk with my dad and express how he's impacted myself and my siblings, uh, even though it may have not been in a more traditional format. He's helped to guide each and every one of us to a faith in some form or another that helped us to guide our own decision makings going forward. So having those individuals as influencers within our lives and the impact that they've had helped us to be influencers in our own lives uh, for our own children and for those around us. And understanding that influencer is not just a person who does a whole bunch of videos on TikToks in some form or another they are more dynamic and more impactful for those who actually are involved in their lives. It's just, how is an influencer impacting your lives? Is it best to have one that's more local, that you see and have physical relationship with, if you will, versus that of one that's more virtual? And that, I think, is where you will get the most impact and understanding is seeking those relationships out. And having a platform such as what you have to help guide people and help them to understand that those relationships are where they're going to have the most impact in their local communities and in their local lives. So when Craig's talking about impact, I want to kind of segue into the, I did a video about regret and it was very, it was very, very emotional. And it was right after my dad's service the day after. And I want to, because we're going to come up on the end of the show here and I want to give Craig a, a chance to do a, a nice close, but I'm going to do this and say, if you got things you need to get squared away with people, get them squared away. I'm telling you, get them squared away. All right. Leave it there because when it's done, it's done. And go watch my video on the regret thing, because it's it's a decision you're going to make. It's a choice you're going to make, and you're going to have to live with that decision. So that's on you and good, bad or indifferent. I'm not judging anyone. I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm just giving you some advice from my perspective, because I've been through it. Craig, mm -hmm. I need a half close, please. <laughs> OK, well, a couple of a couple of things that kind of lead into that, right? One of the comments I think we talked about being able to talk to our younger selves, is there anything that I would have changed in my life, you know, when I was younger? And I have to say no. And um, it's not because I'm, I'm being boastful by any stretch. It, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't make mistakes or if I didn't be who I was, uh, I'd discuss and influence no matter what that word was. So having to, to deal with the regret in some form or another, but I do agree with the fact of reconciling with those in your lives today. Um, just from the dynamic of having my dad, I had, trying to get him to be more involved in my, my family's life was difficult, but I love my dad regardless. So one of the things that I've always shared with him and told him was when I would hang up at the phone with him, I love you, dad. Uh, uh, I love you too, son. And then it started. And so from that dynamic, it worked out well. Got through so it. We did. Our show picture business mission. We want to be of service to you through our guests. Like a Craig Styles. Go to Ameriprise, check out the website. Please, you know, if you need some help with that, that kind of stuff, just go there. Always remember before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. Thanks to Craig Styles for being with us. Sandy, Matt, Craig, Brock, and the legend himself, Mitch. 
Anderson, <laughs> producer, executive producer of the Tom Man Show. Tom Man Show is a production of Boomer's Rock Media. We want to bring your story to life. Thank you so much for joining us. It is what it is. Peace out. <laughs> Peace out, Tom. <laughs> you did it, man. Good job. Hey, High five. Know. Yeah, thanks, brother. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, you had a couple moments, which is way better than I thought. So, hey, but you were still recording video, and it's because we do the video that you get to get all this behind the scenes stuff. This is real, everybody. This is real, real freaking deal. All right. Yep. So, and what I said about Craig and not opening the emails to check my statements, that's that's true. That happened. <laughs> like dude, this was before my dad's demise, and so. Yeah. It's just so reassuring I, because I knew in my in my heart. I not that you don't need to check these things. Of course, you probably should. I don't feel like I, that's my decision. All right, I'm not living with regret. I'm living, I'm looking forward to the thing. I have trust in the people that I deal with, and that's it. So when you put that doubt aside. It makes your life so much easier. Yep. So when you have doubt. You're always going to have that question in the back of your mind. Right, yep. Craig? I mean, yep. You do. You put, put the doubt aside and you just be true and be you and be honest and be forthright and just help people get better. Period. Yep. So yep. thanks, brother. Anything yeah. else you say before we drop you out of here and I do my last couple of seconds of <laughs> No, I think, I think from this dynamic, I think it was a good touch, you know, in regards to kind of address some of the personal stuff that we've had to deal with, with loved ones in our own lives and how we've handled it. And I think some of that real life type stuff kind of is, will be beneficial for those who are watching and those who choose to watch. So yeah, I, I it's life. Like, well, it is life. And I feel like we could have covered more. I had written down the professionals and, um, and I wanted to get into Katie and Linwood, but uh, you know, mm -hmm. and I, the guy down in Detroit who, Wayne County. I mean, I need somebody in Wayne County. I need somebody that yep. knows. I know somebody needs somebody that knows the ropes down there. Katie advised me on that, and she was right. And so that's been yep. a good thing. Just keep that in yep. mind, everybody. That whatever county that your your person has um, had been living in, their residence, yep, probably is going to be where you're going to have to figure things out. So that adds another wrinkle to things. Yeah, you know, there's there's just a lot. So there you. is <laughs> my pleasure, Tom. See you, man. Have a great day. I will. You as well. I love you. I love you too, Tom. Take care, man. Bye bye now. Yeah, that was tough. Had to be done. Helps me. Hope it helps you. Hope you watch this. Hope you like this because it's like. Our show is real. I mean, we just, it's unscripted. It's, it is what it is. And yeah, man. Craig Stiles is the bomb. Brock's the bomb. You guys are the bomb. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Peace out. Bye, Dad. <laughs>